Hey, social media, Mike here with Charles. Charles, say what's up? What's up? Hey, man, today we got a special guest, Jason, CFO for Infinity Gauntlet LLC. Infinity Doing Gauntlet. great things here in San Antonio. And today, man, we're gonna, Jason's going to share a little bit about where he came from, Yeah. how he got into real estate, what exactly his role is with Infinity Gauntlet LLC, uh, and systems and tools, right? Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah, we're so excited to have you here, man. Thanks, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Let's get it going. So let's get it going. So we'll be right back with Jason, guys. So. All right, guys, we're back again. Jason, Jason, pronounce the last name Cabrera. Cabrera, Cabrera, yeah. Cabrera, Cabrera, yeah. Or Cabrera. I can't even say it. One of those two, right? Yeah. Is that Italian or Spanish? That's in Spanish. Spanish, okay. Yeah. Cabrera. Well, again, man, definitely glad to have you on board, man. Uh, thanks. thanks for taking your time on this evening to share with you guys, the viewers, on uh, systems and tools provided by Jason. And uh, let's just get into it, man. Sure. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. The Jason before real estate. How did, how did Jason come into real estate? Oh, wow. Um, so beforehand, um, I guess long story short, is um, uh, I'm 31 years old. I got into this what, about nine months ago. It'll be a year actually in two days. In two days, it'll be a year that I've been doing real estate. Uh, a year ago, I was working at a supplier of Toyota. So um, I was there for seven years. I started as a red shirt, as what they call it, as a temp agent. And I worked my South all the way up. The first four years, it was just plain and simple. I went through the routines, started learning other people's jobs, and I didn't really care about the other person, you know, because most people end up saying like, oh, they don't pay me enough to do that. So right. Mm -hmm. I was more of like, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to learn this guy's job, I want to learn this guy's job. And eventually, later or down the line, you're going to end up being the next person in line when somebody falls off. So I did that, that for four sense. years, became the forklift driver. And then um, when I was a forklift driver, I was offloading and loading trucks. I remember this one time I was just like, I, there's got to be more than just forklift driving. I've been in warehousing for 13 years. Um, those seven years was manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So I just know a little bit. And like I said, when I fell off uh, or as a, as a forklift driver, I just wanted more. And my supervisor just told me, hey, why don't you become a team lead? It took me four tries to become a team lead. Um, after those four years and I eventually got one they gave me the opportunity to choose which department I went to the one that was I least knew about because I knew everything else I wanted the one that I least knew about and the guy ended up asking me who was training me he said what do you want to learn I said I want to learn everything I want to learn what everybody is doing so that as a leader if I were to um, how can I say it? if they were to kind of go behind my back or they're trying to sneak off or whatever, sure. I would know it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, And not only that, spending eight hours of picking or eight hours of sequencing and that, that sort of thing, I don't want them to come and tell me, well, you're new, you're a team lead, you don't know anything about it. I want them to know that I'm going to put myself in their shoes and I'm going to feel the same way that they feel so that I can, you know, help uh, them address everything. It definitely, it definitely relates to that, man. So I don't know, a lot of people don't know if you guys didn't know. I was in the Army, so... You got to start from the bottom, right? You got to start yes. from the bottom. You got to yes. know what the, the front man is doing. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, as you work your way up, become the sergeant or staff sergeant or platoon leader, platoon sergeant. You know, okay, I know that position because mm -hmm. I've been there. So, exactly. Toyota's been really good with, um, that's the word I'm looking for, systems, I guess. Yes. Systems, yes. processes. Yes. I know for sure energy saving. Yes. They make sure. Conservation. Uh, conservation. Energy conservation. They really make sure that every dollar counts. Yes. All the way till, from what I remember, all the way till hey, let's turn off the lights inside the vending machines at a certain time because mm -hmm. that's paying the electricity bill, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have to pay that. They, they really broke it down. Yes. The whole Toyota, as a matter of fact, the Army uh, has a special class for high individuals, high leaders. They actually would go to Toyota, learn the system and process, 
come back and implement it in the unit. So yeah. that's how that's how I know. Did you ever see the one in the military? Uh, uh no, I've military? never been in the military, right. but I very not, not agree in the military, about but at Toyota. Did you ever see military uniforms there? Yeah, 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 a lot of them. Yeah, well, there it goes to show, yeah. guys. I mean, yeah, for sure. Toyota's such a powerhouse where it comes to processes and systems and, yes. and all that good stuff that even the military used it. Yeah. So you're at Toyota, you're forklifting. Where does real estate come from? Real estate, real estate comes in uh, when I met Q. Um, I met him about four years ago, I think like four or five years ago through a mutual friend. And obviously got me into multi-level marketing. I knew that wasn't for me because I mean, trying to sell something that nobody knows anything about, mm -hmm. you know. Um, later on down the road, I still kept in contact with him. Saw him on Instagram. He started doing real estate. He's like, yo, you want to get in contact? You know, just reach out. And I started reaching out. Didn't hear nothing from him, um, you know, for about two years. That long? Yeah. yeah. And then um, a year ago, he I saw him in the apartment complex. And I, I haven't spoken to him forever. And when I ended up telling him, you know, he's just like, hey, this rich dad, poor dad, I'm in real estate, I want you to read the book, you know, and then, you know, come back to me once you're done with it. It took me a while to read that book, no joke, because I'm <laughs> still being a, at that time I was a supervisor, so mm -hmm. I went up three lead positions in less than two years. So I had already knew everything about this, the position I was in and everything like that. So um, at that point, met him up, gave him the book, or uh, I reached out to him on Instagram a year later, he called me, which was the December, 13th of last year and told me to come into the office and let's head it out. Now, did you go to any events prior to the office? I did. Uh, well, I was still working. Well, at that point, I already got in contact with him. Um, and uh, it was during my, I don't know how to say it. I think it was like in April, right? The Geekdom one. The Geekdom one. Yeah, the Geekdom. Geekdom. yeah. You were, you were yeah I was there. I had oh. just got out of work at about like 8 o'clock and, you know, I wasn't you know, didn't get any sleep. I knew if I fell asleep, I wasn't gonna make it. That's the so, one we went to. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we had the picture. That was, yeah, that was where we first met. I know we talked towards the uh, the end. Mm -hmm. uh, that one was myself, Charles, and uh, and Q. Q. Yeah. Happened to be on on the uh, geek the panel. Yeah. Talking about wholesaling, and towards the end, I remember. Now, guess how I remember you, man. By wearing the uniform? By wearing the mustache, man. Look at that. Thing. No way. Oh, yeah. dang. Yeah. See, a lot of people. How long, like been, how long you been wearing that mustache like that? I don't know. About about a year, year and a half. I know you had it to geek though. So I remember talking yeah. to you towards the back, it was me, you, Q, and you were saying, hey, I really want to get involved. Mm -hmm. I haven't done nothing whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I and don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that conversation. Yeah. And I, I guess you, uh, you, Q, really hit it off. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's good, man. Yeah. So you guys uh, linked up. You read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. First yeah. time reading that book? First time hearing about that book? No, I heard okay. about it a long time ago. But I, I actually went and bought the book, and then I gave it to my former supervisor, and I said, hey, when you're done reading it, give it back to me so I mm -hmm. can read it. And I can see what it's all about. He ended up getting fired. He took the book, and you know, I got his position. <laughs> <laughs> he took the book, man. Yeah, yeah. How long did um? So when Q called you, was he inviting you into the company? No, he just said come just, to the office. Just chat. Yeah, okay. he said just come to the office, dress sharp, and you know, I get I'm taking it as an interview. So I came in best dressed and didn't sleep that day either. Um, I showed up at two o'clock knowing that I had to go to work at six o'clock that evening. And yeah, we hit it off. He said he never worked with anybody who had a part or had a full time job. Right. And, you know, I just made it work for him. And he, whether regardless or not, I don't know if he knows this, shout out Q, but um, even if he didn't hire me or, or if he did hire me and I had to quit my job, I would have told him I wasn't going to, I would quit, but I wasn't going to. I would have just been doing both at the same time so that's just on my end <laughs> yeah i mean that happens to a lot of people i mean we get a lot of people that come into our office frank tobar's the, the manager and he interviews a bunch of people and when he interviews them they all have jobs because you still got to sustain yourself yeah a lot of people want to come into real estate and hey let me try this but you can't just quit because i mean for everyone watching you know it takes a while to get your first job i mean i'm, I'm not how long i think i know how long q took to get his first deal mm -hmm. uh some of the guys in here to get their first deal so you got to sustain yourself Having that income coming in, so I get it, man. So yeah, uh, holding that thing on the back and hey, I'm still gonna work, but not tell you. Yeah, I, I definitely get it. Yeah, you know, well, and something that I that I know it's hard for people, because like me, most of my life, it's just always I've worked, always worked for myself, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to, you know, no, not having a paycheck at the end of the week. You know? Yeah. Was that a big thing? Was it hard getting over that? Um, it was actually, and honestly, I and. When we spoke, I even told him, I was like, commission? I don't know what commission is. I, 
knew a little bit because of T-Mobile. I didn't work for T-Mobile, but it's just other jobs that would pay so much more money. I didn't know what commission was. So I stayed away from that because I, I was more of like guarantee check, you know. Yeah. And I just figured that if I bust my ass, excuse my French, but if I break balls, whatever, and I'm doing whatever I need, I'm going to get the most amount of money anyway. And that's when I started figuring out time against money, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's more like you want to be able to make the most amount of money in the less amount of time so that you can at least have more fun. Yeah. All right, well, let's do a couple of shout outs before we get uh, quite a few people watching. Let's read some of the comments. John Costa. Uh, he is our one of our oh. shirts guys for Canopy Insurance. So John Costa, what up? Uh, we got a, quite a few people watching, guys. So if you want, so want to ask questions, we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes on systems and tools here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, Chad, I know you guys spent cha uh, time with Chad the other day, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, Chad. Hey, what's up, dog? So, Thanks for the two bucks. I'm just playing. Chad's <laughs> on there. He said it's live. So shout out to Chad too. We just closed a deal with him. Right on. Yesterday. Yeah, oh yeah. So uh, Frank Tovar, of course, he's on here. He's always turning up the hustle. Anthony, who is the, I believe he's a president for. Uh, Naples, Florida, Rhea. So Anthony's on here. So shout out to him from What's Naples. Up, Anthony. Uh, William what Baker's up? on here, and everyone else is watching. Uh, Thank guys, you so much. You guys who just tuning in, we got uh, Jason here from Infinity Gauntlet. We just chit chatted a little bit about where he came from before, which is Toyota. Yeah. Uh, having the mindset of coming to a commission position only. Mm -hmm. How he met the gentleman uh, by the name of Q Forrest. Mm -hmm. So you're in. You're in the office now. Yeah, right? I'm you, in the you quit office. Toyota? Mm -hmm. No, 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 I didn't. You didn't quit Toyota. Uh, he he knew I was still gonna work, and I told him I can't work financially. I still right. gotta sustain it. How long did you do? Uh, How long were you doing both to quit Toyota? I went up until my seventh year anniversary, which was June 25th of this year. Oh, so this year we're talking about yeah, five four months, months ago. Four, yeah, months? four or five months ago, I've been doing it full time. Okay. And you were all, I'm I'm, I'm assuming the whole time <clears throat> you were there. I mean, those hours get long. Extremely, you're trying to get all the knowledge, yes, and make money. Mm -hmm. Then you got to go take care of business, yeah. Then you got to sleep, personal then life, then you got personal life, yeah. Oh man, it was so bad. Yeah. It was a lot really of people bad. can't make it, man. Yeah, and, and I, I love it because even when I started at Toyota, the HR manager, um, when I was a red shirt and he wanted to hire me on after four months, um, he told me honestly, I didn't think you were gonna make it. And first thing I always tell people is I love to prove people wrong. So a lot of people end up saying like, oh, you're not gonna make it. Oh, it's too long. You're not gonna do this. And I'll die if I'm, you know, just to just to prove my point. If that makes any sense? So it's no, like, it definitely makes sense. I'm putting it in there. You ever seen that Stone Cold uh, video that's going around where he says, uh, you go, he says, you go. Uh, Misjudge me, man. I put you wrong every damn time. Exactly. Yeah, where he says, if I've got to be flipping burgers, I'm going to be the best damn flipping burger that, person there is. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. true. It's yeah. true. And I, and anything that I do, I'm going to throw 100 Well, you come a long way because, you know, you know, we have a uh, uh, relationship with uh, some of the other companies here in town, one being y'all's company. And, uh, you know, we've seen your growth. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. uh, and we're all happy for you. And, of course, we're happy you're here. It's awesome to to be able to listen to somebody that was doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. And I know it's hard to go from secure funds to I'm just gonna believe in me. Yes, yes. That's fucking hard. Man. It was extremely hard, no joke. Yeah. And it was so funny telling the kid's mom like, you know, I didn't even tell her I quit and I, I paid 1400 bucks in child support. So <laughs> it was bad, it was really bad. and. She was like, I already knew you quit, you know, because nothing's coming in. And I was just like, well, let's just give it time. Yeah, just give it time. I'm going to make things okay. work, you know. So you're saying you quit Toyota about four or five months ago. Yeah. At four, at the, when you quit in July? Mm -hmm. June. 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 How long were you at Infinity? I was already. Oh, when did you start Infinity? I started last year in December on the December. 13th. So about, you were there for about six months to yes. quit Toyota. Yes. In those six months, what, is it, what were you doing at, at Infinity? Uh, I was CFO. I was uh, acquisitions, you know. Was, Obviously, you got to be in the bear, uh, be on the bottom, cold calling, cold calling. And the funny thing is, is when Q was just like, you're just gonna be on the phones, you're gonna call these people, and you're just gonna, you know, see if they're interested in selling. And I was like, you know, the funny thing is, is I was doing this back in 2010, and I was like, I didn't even know it was called uh, I didn't know it was called cold calling. Cold calling. I, I thought it was just telemarketing. Telemarketing. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, man? Like, like, for example, like what you said right now, for me. I mean, there's no bottom to anything. Yeah. Because, you know, in this business, man, we got all different types of ways to make money. Mm -hmm. You could flip, you could wholesale, you could, you know, you could wrap properties, sub two, you could JD. So, all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
but everybody plays a key part. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's exactly so right. So you jumping into acquisitions, I mean, that's actually fucking hard. It is. You know, that's not bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. That you, because without acquisition, you ain't, have no business. ain't nothing happening. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's where it starts off. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. So, so you go into that position right away. To me, that's a very important position. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Uh, and if it weren't for that. So I kudos mean, to you. Ben. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, and so we got a couple comments here real quick. I want to make sure everyone gets recognized. Uh, Raymond's on here. Uh, Raymond, up, Raymond? Uh, does Southwest funding. So if you guys need mortgages, you can hit him up. Uh, so Luis Montoya says, uh, hello from Dallas. Uh, and I guess you can relate from your 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 event. Uh, he said he used to work for Lexus but at the recon department until he got laid off in 08. Oh, wow. Uh, and he still works with cars still today at an upholstery shop. But he says, thank God that he's been guided to real estate. Uh, so shout out to Lewis from Keep Montoya, grinding, baby. From Keep grinding. Yeah, so. All right, so your acquisitions, what's the day-to-day schedule looking like uh, a couple months ago? Uh, day-to-day was I was, As acquisition. I was still working at, at Toyota. So um, going in at 6.30 at night. Okay. Um, and then I would go. Uh, what's that? What's that? your day start at uh, Infinity? At Infinity, it would start at I guess nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah, nine o'clock in the morning. So nine wow. to six is when yep. you went to work. Yep. So uh, I would go from nine o'clock in the morning until about four o'clock in the afternoon because I have to go and pick up my kids from school, um, and then I would pick them up, take them home, and then sometimes if I had enough time, I would make it back um, to the gauntlet, uh-huh. and then I would call some more. And if not, I would take my computer with mobile hotspot in my my car. I would make it to my my other job. I'd stay in the parking lot, and I always get early. I, obviously, I was here an hour. Right, early. right, I saw that. Yeah. So I was. I'm always early at the job, so I sit in the parking lot and I'm making my calls. <laughs> what did you sleep? I would. I I I wouldn't sleep, so to speak. So like, I would get out from my job at like six thirty in the morning, maybe eight o'clock, and then I would I would de- decide, do I really want to go home and eat? get a little bit of sleep and then try to make it to the office or do I just take a shower get ready for the next day and then make it to the office and sleep in the car so I would do that I would drive sleep. all the way back to the, the office sleep in the car until somebody opened the office yeah, I, don't know, I don't know if you've ever you've been to a few of our presentations and stuff mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard me say nobody knows how deep your hole is, you know. Yeah. And if you're not willing to de- dig that hole, mm-hmm. you're just never gonna know. Yeah. You know, and you sharing that right now, that reminds me of that because nobody knows what that person goes through to yeah. get to where they're, they're trying to get. You know. Yeah. That's so exactly that's pretty right. awesome. Man. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I can definitely relate, man. You just said something that brought a flashback to me. Uh, going to call, going into your car, and making calls. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was in the army, when Charles and I first started, I was doing the same thing. If you recall. I was still doing active duty, uh, wow. so I would get there at 5 in the morning, I would get off at 5, and I would change in the car, close, mm-hmm. do real estate, go to the flip, uh, go to look at a house or so, whatever the case is, but at lunch, I remember sitting in uniform in the car because you don't want to get away from everyone, yes. just focus, and I would have my computer, yeah. so I can definitely relate, man, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, and that's what it takes, you know, mm-hmm. I always tell everybody, I always, I always tell everybody, and, and, and it's not hard to tell, I don't want to judge, I never want to judge anyone. But I know when someone is just giving it everything they got, mm-hmm. that's the person who's going to get to the next level. Man. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it's one hundred percent right about that. Like, so, yeah. so you, you're looking at nine to four. Or so, when you first join mm-hmm. acquisitions, let's talk about some of your. Well, let's talk about your first deal. How about that? Let's so, talk about your first deal as an acquisition with Affinity. So the first deal was. Um, we go off of names of the street. So it was Quaker Town. It was this lady, older lady who was living off of an exo- uh, oxygen mask, or ox- oxygen tank. It was yep. just her and her niece. And I just made a call. And, you know, I think I, I called, I did a follow up about two weeks later. She answered the phone and she's like, Yeah, you know, I'm interested in selling. Or I think she gave me a call back, one of the two. And um, she's like, I'm interested in selling. She was asking for 184,000. Now this house was really, really nice, and I think that was retail at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was just like, Wait, before we go more into it, how did you get that lead? What what system? What what list was it? Oh, you calling this lead? It was. I think it was uh, tax 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 delinquent. Yeah, it was a tax delinquent. And um, we were back in the day, or I, it's so funny saying back in the day, but at that time, this was uh, around, I called her in December, and then we closed in February. 
So um, we had to give her, um, what was it? I guess a lease back. Uh -huh. She wanted to yeah. stay in the property yeah, until, yeah, her, yeah, until her apartment was done. And um, I gave her a call. She was just like, yeah, I'm interested. Um, you know, and we were doing smile and dialing. So I called about 3,000 people. I know on Hilco Homes, I said about 7,000. But it's one of those two because we were just dialing 300. I was doing Dial, dial, on the yeah, phone? Yeah, that's all we and were doing. And this is when? This was in December. So I had I had my, my, my work phone and yeah. that was a two oh one num or two one oh number and I was using that number because nobody answered my actual phone because that's a six oh two number. And um, I was using that when I was just calling, 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 calling and nobody answered, something would answer to get cussed out and whatnot. Come across her, she wants to sell, I'm saying cool. Um, Garrett is trying to tell me the Trek contract, like right there on the spot. He said, just go over there, lock it up. And I was just like, uh, I don't know what to do. So we, we just go. And when we go, we show up. He goes, takes pictures of the house. Garrett? Yeah, uh -huh. I'm talking to the seller. 15 minutes later, we sit down, she signs, we walk out. And I was just signs like- Signs for how much? Uh, signs for 140. How'd you, how'd you chop it down from 180 to 140? Uh, well, apparently she had gotten like a massage, like, or, or I guess those, those, those old people baths. You know, like uh -huh. the jet things, uh -huh. and that's what kind of devalued her house. So it was because she had that lien on, or oh, not a lien, but she mean. still needed to pay that off. Okay. So okay. then we were just like, okay, we do it like this. We pay that off. Boom, everything's done. So we did that, and then uh, we actually two weeks later, before she or two weeks before she was gonna move out, we actually talked her down to one thirty five. And uh, that was me. I just called her up. I said I had real good report with her niece. They, um, she had all these like Native American stuff and lots of wolf stuff. And I told her I'd love to buy all of this stuff, you know, and what I'm gonna end up paying for. Why don't you just knock the price down? She says, "Cool." Signed it off. Got it. That was my first deal. It was three thousand dollars. Wow. So I forgot to mention this, man. We have this buzzer here. When okay. this buzzer is hit. It makes that sound. Hey. So every time there's something of like, man, that's good work, or some type of value that you're gonna provide to these people, you get a buzzer. And that one being his first deal, uh, cold calling straight up old school phone yeah. style, right? Smiling, dialing. Uh, smiling, yeah, I haven't heard that one in a while. Smiling, dialing. Old school, dialing. man. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to your first deal, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Not only that, it was my work phone. <laughs> your work phone, yeah. Uh, Jermaine Wilson's on here saying shout out to the HP Disc Crew. Uh, Wild 3000, uh, he would lose his mind. Yeah, so that was back then, though. I mean, now I'm assuming you guys have a diner system, right? Yes. I definitely want to get into system before we get into that, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Jermaine Wilson, so shout out to Jermaine. Chad up, saying, Jermaine? is Garrett out there giving massages to sellers? Uh, I don't know, but he does know how to, how to, how to close the deal? sweet them. Yeah, yeah close he, the deal. he knows how to finesse it. Okay, uh, I do want to do a quick little reminder, guys. Uh, here, make sure you guys are following Home Model Center Solutions on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. When you guys do go on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button to watch our episodes, uh, vlogs, and all that good stuff that we're doing on a daily basis. The podcast is every Wednesday at 6.30, uh, so guys, make sure you guys are doing that. And there's a lot of value on it, too, so y'all should watch it. You should watch it, man. Well, thank uh, you, man. Yeah, yeah, dude, you guys are fire. <laughs> so we got a, a lot more people watching, guys, so feel free, like I said earlier, uh, we just kind of so far, for those who are tuning in, I see Raul's on here. Shout out to Raul and Caitlin's on here. What up, Raul? Uh, shout out to Caitlin. Uh, so we're, we're just chit-chatting about where he came from, Toyota. Yeah. Uh, how you met Q with the Infinity Gauntlet. How you were doing acquisitions. Acquisitions. Talk about your first deal and how you were smiling down and made that $3,000 wholesale deal. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel proud? Yeah, I did. I did because then I was just like, like I said, I told Garrett, I was like, it can't be that easy. There's no way it can be that easy. However, it was just the, the payback that was easy. The hard work was the one that Get was just it, like, man. it was worth it. It was definitely worth it sleeping in that car for sure. <laughs> yeah. well, that makes sense, man. Yeah. Uh, so what else before, I guess, when did the CFO come in? What CFO came in, mm, I want to say somewhere in like, maybe May. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit before May. So you're doing acquisitions mm -hmm. all the way up till May. Pretty mm -hmm. much the same thing where you're cold calling. Yep, cold calling. That's all we were doing. And I was, I was at my job and um, I was... They gave me the formula, the ARV formula, right. you know, uh, after uh, repair value. And um, they gave me the formula. Mm -hmm. I remember I was I was smiling dialing this one lady, and it was Asusena, actually. And um, I wrote it down on a piece of paper. I did everything, and I was just like, oh, okay, so I do the uh, repair costs times 
70 percent you know i did all that i was like investors budget okay right. hold on i'm the buyer i was just like okay so i'm gonna put myself in the buyer's position i started writing everything out and i basically created the scale okay well i can go down from thirty thousand, and i can't go no more than forty thousand in order for this job to work so i was just like let me just go in the middle i'll do 33 to thirty-five thousand. so i end up calling her up and um i was just like yeah you know i can do thirty-three thousand. she goes oh okay because she's I think like twelve thousand dollars in tax, uh, in tax taxes, and um, she said okay, but she kind of like bit around the bush. Everybody has touched that lead, no joke. Like, and not to mention, I want to say like two weeks ago, we were finally got her on contract and whatnot. Yeah, yeah we do. That's pretty good. So it's insane. I've been touching that since since way back. I want to say since March. So March, and where went? So. Yeah, we're in December. That's the boards of follow-up then, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I, I wrote everything down on a piece of paper, and I was at my other job, and we use Excel spreadsheets. So I was just like, well, you know what? Let me just end up putting this in a formula so I don't have to do all the mental math. And it took me a while to even write everything out and then call her up and then just only talk to her for like 15 seconds. So I put it in the spreadsheet, and I made the ARV calculator, and I went to go and show Q. I was like, yo, check this out. This is, you know, it's got, it's got the, 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 it's got the ARV, and by that point, I didn't have any percentages other than the seventy percent that we normally would mm -hmm. use. So um, I put that in. Him and Garrett was just like, "Yo, this is fire! Like we can do things over the phone now." And at that time, the dialers came in. I think so. When, when did the dialers come in? The dialers came in about mm, about mid May, almost June. Man, it's like we were marrying each other, like yeah, because like, like, we were going through the same thing, you know. Like last, okay, so last October, not this one, but the October before, mm -hmm. I started telling everybody, hey, we're gonna go to a new system, and man, it was hard because, you know, Mike and I have talked about this. I think Texas was a little slow to all these systems that everybody's running, yeah, because it, we didn't really get hit hard here, so we didn't have the necessity for all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But then we started hearing about it, and then and then in February we started we launched Mojo, but we really didn't go full force until like June. Like we switched everything over to automation, mm -hmm. and I guess you, we were like, yeah, you know, that's neck and neck for yeah. sure. So you said in June? In June, yeah. So what what other system do you guys use? We use Call Tools now. Oh, so yeah. What did you guys use before? Mojo. Mojo. We started Mojo, Same and we, I think Mojo only, we only use Mojo for maybe about a week or two. All right, well, and this is where this is where the podcast comes in. So uh, now that we kind of got the formalities out the way, you know, who you are, where you've been, and how you got to this place, mm -hmm. uh, now let's talk about the systems and tools. Because mm -hmm. like Charles said, we were kind of neck and neck. We were doing the smile and dialing uh, until we get it more automated. So this is the part I'm sure everyone wants to hear. Uh, so you guys are watching. You guys feel free to ask a question. We can definitely yeah. ask uh, Jason and see how they're doing at Finny Gauntlet, kind of see how we're doing it a little bit here. Maybe we can get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Uh, Jermaine says... Now, he bumped into Ricardo this past weekend, uh, recognized him from the podcast. Such a cool guy. Jermaine, I saw that video, man. It was, it was a great video. Thank you, man. Uh, I know. So, shout out to Jermaine. Uh, Christian Malara? Who's that? Hey, that's uh, that's that's a new kid. Yeah. And a new kid on the block. Yo, yeah. what a do-do, Christian. So, he's my boy, Jason. I'm getting yeah. Anthony out here. Anthony's always a cool guy, man. Uh, Anthony's just smiling down. Nice. Right on. Thanks, Anthony. And, yeah, uh, for sure. Of course, we have uh, Q. So, Q finally logged on here. Uh, what Jason. Up? What did you do? Jason is a genius. Y'all pay attention to what he's saying. He's one of the reasons our company closed over $300,000 in a month. Yeah. Creates systems for operation every single day and pulls that as of Q saying that. Definitely oh, went up. Uh, definitely yeah. going to have to share on that, man. So everyone who's watching yeah. can see what systems and tools are playing. So you guys start from Mojo. You, you Mojo. switched to Call Tools. Why, why Call yeah. Tools? So we, it's so funny. when I don't know why. Other When we got the Mojo, he wanted us to pay 97 basically for the people to use the dialer. Okay. And I understood his concept because it's like, well, everything's being given to you. You're gonna use it to the best of your ability if you end up putting your own money into it, if that makes sense. Because if something's given to you, most people just are like, ah, you know, it was given to me, whatever. They're not gonna take the full force of it. So when he was just like, you know what, invest, you know, and then you guys can get your spot in the data. I was like, you know, I'm in it, I'm in it. So I gave him $97 so I can use it. Two. And Huh? Okay, the nice seven two. To to Q. So the, I was paying my own membership. Okay, that okay. makes sense. So I could have my own dollar and I can make my calls. Then after that, uh, we started finding out that our abandon rate sucked. Um, you know, we weren't getting that many uh, qualified leads. I mean, they were just it. It was just 
I don't know how to say it, not organized. Right, well, makes sense. Yeah, so he ended up getting out of it and he got call tools. And the cool thing about call tools is he gave it to me so that I can look into it and I can figure That's it out. Right. Yeah. yeah. When I got into it, I found so much stuff with call tools. Like you can set your own email on there. You can, um, you can text message on there. And the cool thing about setting your emails is there's two other options on there. You can either schedule your own meetings or you can schedule callbacks. Now I'm booked for next month up until March. I mean, not next month, uh, next year up until March. So everything that I followed up back from Jan or uh, from June mm -hmm. is now all booked in for. Yeah, I've been calling. I've been everybody who's saying call me back in two months, three months, next year, da da da. I'm scheduling them in call tools. So awesome. I, I'm good and I'm good in March. Well, yeah. call tools is a it's an awesome platform, and that's that's the one we use as well. Yes. Uh, on the comments, you'll see a comment from Frank Tovar, the manager here at Home Bottom Solutions. What the Frank? comment is pinned. Uh, and it's calltools.com forward slash HBHS. So if you guys are interested in using call tools, you can definitely go to their website, yes. promo code HBHS, and you guys will get some sort of discount or some good value stuff. I forget what it is to the detail, but definitely get to get uh, a dollar for every dollar counts, right? Yeah, it works. So and trust me, it's worth it. How many acquisitions guys are at, at uh, Infinity now? I think now it's um, nine. Nine, nine or ten people. And all nine, ten, all dialing? Yep. Yeah, just about. Uh, before we had 15 dialers. Um, Q had a couple of VAs on there. But since things are kind of slow, it's no use for VAs. We could just use our own people on there and we're qualifying them. So Junior acts are the ones that are that are doing that. How many calls you guys all making a month? I mean, a day? Uh, about 300, 300 a day. Um, but that just depends on the amount of... Like I said, there's that call ratio. I don't know if you guys are into it as much. You can get up to 10 people on the right, same number. Right, yeah, yeah. If you do that, you're not gonna get enough calls, if that makes sense. You're going through your leads too fast, you're gonna end up getting more abandoned. So what's your ratio? But we do it around maybe a six or an eight. Now this, that that varies depend, uh, depending on the person who's on there. So if you have five people on there, you don't wanna go through 50 leads all in one shot. Mm -hmm. So about five is a good one, eight is a good medium. A, a real good meeting. You'll still have to sacrifice your your abandon rate uh -huh. um, for your success rate, but it's it's worth it to do that many calls on at once. I think we're running about a six. Perfect. You know, so. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. And it, it's funny because some of them are just like, "Yo, what's going on with my?" And it's it's just because it's so slow when everybody is trying to get the best out of out of all their calls. It's going to run really slow. Okay. So the VAs that are making calls too when you guys had them? Mm -hmm. How many calls? I mean, how many VAs did you guys have? Uh, I think it was up to three, three VAs, and um, that was just so that we can kind of perfect what we were doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Leo, let's get them to qualify some leads. Now we're teaching everybody how to use Podio. Now we're teaching everybody, you know, how to run these comps, how to do ARVs, so that they can get up onto the dialers and we can make the calls. Right now, the VAs were just there to qualify them so that. We can teach the people how to run these unqualified the leads, you yeah. know, and then at that point, get rid of the VAs. Now we got people set up. Now they're able to make the calls and the offers over the phone. That's cool. Man. Okay. Yeah, so we're in with Podio. Mm -hmm. That's what about it. That's yeah, what I was about to get into. Yeah. Beast mode. Beast mode. Beast mode. Beast why mode. beast mode? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Q. Why beast mode? <laughs> Q, why beast mode? <laughs> so that's the uh, CRM you guys are using. Yes. Oh. Yeah. How's that working for you? It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing because it, uh, the cool thing about uh, I don't know if you guys use Podio, but you can also create your own files, your own template. You can change it the way that you want. We actually use um, Investor Fuse. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, everybody's different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, we, we tried Podio, didn't we, in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, we tried Podio not for long, like two weeks. Yeah, Maybe. it was What's just. That? Is it because there's mean, so we, much going on there? We we went from. Uh, I guess everybody does this. We went from spreadsheets. Oh yeah. To, to, to Google Docs. <laughs> we did the same thing. You know, to fucking Podio, back to Google Docs. Fuck Podio, excuse me. Yeah. And, then, and then, and then we're like, man, we're just trying to find a good CRM, dude. Mm -hmm. And there were so many, mm -hmm. you know, so many, man. And and uh, so I told Frank, man, Frank, just just look at them all, dude, and pick the one you want, dude. Mm -hmm. And I think he developed a good relationship with the guy from Investor Fuse, and that's why we we went with him. And uh, we actually, it, it took a while, man, for everybody to learn because when it's we hard for something new, anyways. Yeah, when definitely. we when we switched stuff, I don't know if it was like that with you guys, but we switched, you know, call tools, Investor Fuse, Microsoft 365, Teams, where everybody talks. Oh, yeah, we tried Slam. We'll I think it's Slam. Slam. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like we switched 
Slack. Dude, it's so slack, many, slack. Yeah, it's slack. So many things at one time, dude, that all our people were looking on. They're just know. like, yo, there's no structure. Yeah. Everybody starts freaking out. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, know prop exactly stream and Repelio, and, mm -hmm. and it was just Rebo Gate, and it was like Rowdy. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It's like so much. All these fucking tools, you know what I mean? Uh, excuse yeah. my language, man. The cool thing that I like about the most is, you know, obviously Q, I'm the systems manager, so Q's like, hey, check this out, look into it. Is it something that we can work on? I'm big on data. I'm big on, you know, spreadsheets and just huge on systems because, like, Toyota, they kind of bred me into so using systems. I think I, I always, you know, think everything you do leads you to something else, right? Mm -hmm. Like with you when you were at Toyota, you wanted to learn everything. Mm -hmm. So you went from one thing to another thing to another thing. Then you went to management. Mm -hmm. And all those things, now you went into real estate, it, it, it laid the foundation for you to, yeah. to run what you're doing right now. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. right. So we're talking about a, a base mode and all that. Now we here, like Charles said earlier, we use um, InvestorFuse. Uh, so the new pin comment that you guys should see from Frank Tovar is InvestorFuse.com forward slash HBHS. You guys want to see what we use? I think they have, I'm sure they have a free trial something along those lines. You guys want to decide to use Investor Views? Uh, that we, I mean, it works for us. Uh, so I'm, you guys can definitely use that promo code as well uh, for Investor Views and uh, get uh, the HBHS discount, whatever that case may be. So, so you don't mind me. So you're, like, with our system, you know, it's a little bit different sure, than mm -hmm. you, you guys. Mm -hmm. So pretty much, like, are you guys, what, get there a certain time, everybody's on dialers, mm -hmm. You know, are they are the acquisitions closing on deals, or do they have someone else that comes in and closes it? Yeah, so we have the junior acts that go on to the dialers, and then the senior acts are the ones that run the comps and and and, and make sure if it's a deal or not. Who's the senior right now? Seniors would be me, um, Leon, Philip. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it right now. Everybody else is juniors. Okay. Well, you, I know you guys are doing out of state stuff. We're doing yeah. out of state stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what system would you recommend to people? Uh, as far as out of state, like what? To look up comps and... Oh, prop stream. Man, dude, we're running the same <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, we're prop pretty stream. much running the same system, yep, man. Yep, yep, just about. Um, but I love prop stream because, yeah. you know, prop stream is, is... It gives you so much information. It, it does. It gives you a lot of information. It, it, and the best thing to do is when you're getting into a negotiation is to know that you have all your ammo, basically. We use that, and also, you know, we tell our guys, you know, because you know, we, we have some pretty good strong guys here that we truly trust, you know, that run the numbers, and, mm -hmm. and um, so I also, you know, we show them how to run numbers on Zillow, you know. Oh, okay. Because really, you know, when you look at Zillow, if you look at it from the perspective of, hey, if there's new listings, that agent is representing those sellers right. has already priced those properties where they need to be. Mm-hmm. Because you know, they're going with the market. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. And so that's another way to do it. Check some balance, you know, mm -hmm. with, uh, of course, with Prop Stream. Um, all of their information is awesome. And, uh, you know, and then here in San Antonio, of course, we get MLS. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, we don't really use uh, Zillow or Redfin. We do if we can't find anything. Yeah. Like if it's a complete dead thing, we can't find nothing in Prop Stream or Propelio. You know, we we will definitely. Well, that's another system we use the Propelio. You yeah. know, it's yeah, we use system. them both. Yeah. We use them both. It's a good way to check check your numbers. You exactly. Know? Using them both. You know, yeah, so. and I'm that type of guy. You're gonna end up. At, what I do is I check it three times. If I get the same number three times, you know, it works. If I get something different along the way, I'm gonna do it another three times yeah. to make sure I did it right. Well, we're definitely fond of uh, Propelio. So Daniel was just heard her. So shout out to Daniel and the Propelio and the whole yeah. Propelio Academy. Yeah. Uh, so I got a question here. What does training and development look like in, uh, in your organization? Training and development. Training and development from the guy who comes in from day one to, to get into where you're at. So the, or whatever the case may be, how do you guys develop the guys? So what we want to do is obviously Q will end up doing the interview. So uh -huh. he's going to end up taking care of the characteristics of, or character of the person. Where is their drive? What are they trying to do? What are they trying to accomplish? You know, um, as I was talking with Frank earlier, people come, they go, they go. You know, and you want to find those right people who are interested in building a company, interested in going the long route. Yeah. More people, more often than not, they end up saying, yeah, I'm here to build the business, and then they get what they can, and then they leave. You know, and that sucks, and then they're, they're out there, you know, you wasted so much 
No, not wasted. I don't want to say that. You, you put so much time and effort into these people to get them where they need to be as far as changing their mindset, and then they just say, you know, screw y'all, I'm gone. But what I got to say about that is, like, I look at it from this perspective, and I'm sure you guys do too, because is, yeah, and we can train a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that. Mm -hmm. So the more, you, the more you show people what we do, of course, I know you guys do that. Mm -hmm. You know, some people don't ever finish digging that hole, man. Yes. But they could become an asset if they leave and two months later they're calling you. Yes. The ones that hurt, I think is what you're alluding to. Yeah. Is the ones that you really thought and you spent a lot of time on them. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, they're like, hey, I'm, oh I'm out of here, you know. Yeah. And you know what? To each his own. You know, we get it. You know what? Yeah. I get but it. But those are the ones that you had intimate conversations with. Yes. The ones you sat down with and you're like, man, this is, this guy's he's going with us. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. They those, believe the vision. They believe it. You were going to make it. And, and those are the ones ah. that hit you in the heart. Yes. Number, man. Yes. So, yeah. So the training, uh, they, they're going to sit down, watch some, some videos, uh, John Martinez, um, and, you know, he's really, you know, uh, he's, shout out to John, he's a good guy, he loves, he knows how to negotiate, but he's a bit bland. I just want to say his information is great, but if he was more smiling, more interactive, it would be awesome. But his information there, and it works, it works. Give a, that. a quick shout out, man. This dude probably has a new record for pushing that like button so many times. Uh, that's Alex from uh, <laughs> Miracle. Yeah, I've been watching this What's thing. What's up, man? What up, Alex? Alex been hitting that button nonstop, man. That's been like that's a good dude, man. man. Yeah, Alex is, yeah, Alex is bad. Good dude, man. I didn't even realize how tall he was. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is more yeah. uh, Shout out yeah. to Alex from Hilco and the whole Hilco team. All yeah, the people sure, out. Hilco, y'all are amazing. You guys, you guys, you know, all they do is a class, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're watching videos, and you, you throw them on a diet right yeah, away. Yeah, once they're done, uh, what we want to do is role play. That's that's the best thing you want to do. How long are they watching videos? Day, two days? Two uh, days? It should take them a day. One it day. should take them one day. I think it's no longer than 19 videos. I think uh -huh. what they go go over. Okay, once you finish the day, then what's next? Uh, the next day is. Um, Obviously, watching somebody make calls. That's, right. that's the shadowing next one. Somebody. Yeah, you want to shadow them. Uh, that's just how we did over there in Toyota. It was the same kind of process. We give them two weeks um, to kind of understand where everything is. The first week, you sit back, you watch. That's all you do. If you feel like you're ready, that you want to jump into it, yeah, we'll give you the opportunity, you know, just to see where you're at, get critiqued a little bit, sure. and then you move on from there. But um, definitely the second one, you're shadowing, you're watching, and then a lot of role playing. What we tend to tell everybody is to get the script, go home, talk to yourself in the mirror. I know that sounds crazy, but hear yourself, record yourself. Yep. Just find out what it is that you're doing to make it believable. Because you have, first of all, you gotta believe it first. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't believe it, the seller's not gonna believe it and they can smell it through you. So not reading the whole script, but how does, uh, how does the intro look for y'all's script? Uh, we start off as, <laughs> first off, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you or uh, sell you anything. I'm not a bill collector. You know, I'm just uh, you know, That's how you start off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to start off with that because so first of all, they're going to end up You Dude, there was one guy who was just like, okay, but it happens all the time because it, they don't get approached that way. Most right. people are like, yo, I'm an investor. I'm Six, just trying to buy property. I'm coming into it. Yeah, we're like, oh, don't hang up. Please don't hang up. Yeah. Hear me you out. Know? Yeah, hear me out for just a couple of I, I can see that working because you're like, hey, hey, hold up, man. Yeah, yeah. Right away, if they don't hang up, no. You already created some type of report. Exactly. The first three seconds, I think it's the first three seconds earn you the next five minutes. Uh, earlier oh, we yeah, talked yeah. about, um, you, guys talk, you guys use Beast Mode. Yeah. Uh, we talked about PropStream here. Uh, not probably. Yeah, PropStream. That's what we're talking about. You guys use PropStream as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you guys, in a quick 30 seconds, if you want to explain what is PropStream to someone who hasn't heard it before. I guess I would say PropStream is a MLS access that gets you comps uh, nationwide. But not only that, man, it's, it's a database, man. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's court records on... on on steroids, man. Because, it is because you can look you up. You get everything. You get you can look up mortgages, tax information. You can when it was sold, last sold, who owned it, title, yes. everything. Yes, buyers. yes. You can even, buyers, cash buyers. You yeah, can find other, people in liens. Yeah. I mean everything. The other beautiful, the other beautiful thing, yeah, tax liens, all kinds of stuff. The other beautiful thing about it is that that we love is that you can look up heat maps, mm -hmm. trends, mm -hmm. 
So if you're looking at a city, a city you've never even been to, yes, you can look up what the trend is and, and attack that that area. That's of, exactly that right, and that's what we did in in Ohio. Um, I have a friend who's in Memphis who's actually a truck driver. He wants to be investing, and I told him, "Give me some of your zip codes, and I'll look it up." And I did that, and he's out in the rural area of Memphis, right. mm-hmm. but. Um, if I, I told him, just try to get inland more, give yeah. me some more, you know, leads out there, and I'll definitely get you to start working. So you guys run a... Uh, Real quick before you get into that. So that was PropStream, guys. You guys are interested in PropStream. On, uh, obviously, we're using it. Of course, Infinity's using it. Yeah. Uh, the next pinned comment is the uh, PropStream trial. You guys want to see how that works? Uh, Frank told me I put the comment. It's pinned. So if you guys want to try it out, there is another promo code. Of course, it's HP just again. So if you guys want to uh, do a trial run PropStream, See how it can benefit you guys. See how it can take your stuff to the next level. Uh, promo code HPHS. Yeah. So we we also use Perpetual. Yeah. So that's basically we're yeah. using that for Texas. So so the good thing about Perpetual is do you guys put your people on the academy? Uh no. We do. Like we we what I like to do is get everybody on the academy because you know there's a lot of information on there. Yes. And it speeds the growth up pretty quick. That's correct. And um, we do end up bringing it up because their videos are there. You know, they're free. They do give out so much information. It's just up to them. And that's yeah. where we're saying if they're hungry enough, they can do it. If They'll not, it. there's somebody behind them to say, they're not. we're not going to come up to you and say, yo, did you get all your videos done? Oh, did you check this out? Did you do this? You know, because then that's going to instill the mind. It's just like, yo, get off my back. I'll do it at my own pace. But if they do it at their own pace and they don't do anything about it, that's when it's like, yo, you're not doing nothing, you're not bringing value, get out. <laughs> so I, got, I got another question. So, Liz, like we use, you know, well, let me just, let me just, like we, we don't, we've never used this source. I don't think we do. You know, uh, no. you know, we, we don't use this source. Like, I'm sure it's a good platform, mm-hmm. but everybody's going there. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think you use this TLO. Yeah, so we have we have TLO too. We yeah. use TLO, but like for example, we're gonna pull this. You know, we're gonna we either pull like you know uh, the Propelio. We have Rebo Gate. We have uh, of course we pull, huh? Are you a pro? We have. We used to have that. Right? We have that yeah. But we we got you know we got we we joined up with one of the good programs for from uh, PropStream, so mm-hmm. we get a lot of these from there. Of course, we get the code violations and the taxes and the divorce list and stuff you guys tackle all that stuff also yeah yeah and and do you guys pull anything from prop tree yeah man yeah. we have we have Dude, uh, i pulled out ten thousand today yeah i you pulled can. out ten thousand from q part two all right part two let's wait a few seconds for people to uh, start logging on and hopefully we sound better this time than last time yeah. As soon as the first person can uh, let us know how it sounds, so we'll, we'll kind of get into yeah. it. Yeah. So on, on the prop stream, um, what do you like most? Right, tax, we're back. Taxes for prop stream. Mm, I think everybody goes for that. That. So what I pulled was um, failed do, listings. Do tell. Yeah, I pulled failed listings, and failed? I got I got twenty two hundred. Failed Fail listing, listings? Yeah. yeah, because they, at one point they did want to sell. Cool. It's a 50-50, but That's I nice, mean, at least we can call them up and be like, yo, obviously it didn't work because of this, so we can make it work because of this. You know what I, I mean? like that, I like that. Yeah. So I, I did have a question to ask. Let's wait a few seconds before people start coming off. So All right. I'll get, uh, get seven people log on. We'll, so we'll keep talking about keep talking what we've been talking someone. about. We'll just share, the, uh, share this one now, guys. So Alex Alexander was the first one, or Alex from Hillco was the first one to notice the uh, the audio feedback. So shout out Alex and uh, thank you, thank you, Alex. Alex now saying that this one's good to go. I definitely want to. I think we got a good what 15 more minutes or so. I really, yeah. really want to get the system and tools to you guys who are watching yeah. uh, this part too. So let's get a few more seconds where people can uh, realize what's going on. That the first one's over, and we're part two, man. You got like a, a episode here, man. Episode one, episode two. Yeah, I mean, I part one, part two. God works in crazy. I got the VHS. <laughs> so let me ask you a question before before we get into the technical okay. stuff. So I know that the that the, the, the Q is a big time uh, gamer. Yes. So uh, we see you guys sometimes just going at it, playing games and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I like that stuff because, you know, it's different from what we do, right? Mm-hmm. You know, But how do you or who, I'm assuming Q for one, but how do you pull back the, re- the reins on someone who just came in, maybe there's two weeks, 
but it's still on probation, how do you not let them fall into that, you know, hey, man, you're still, you know. Uh, it's kind of hard if you think about it because um, we don't want to make it seem like, oh, we've earned the chance to do this. Yeah. But it kind of gives a way of a motivation to say you can do the same thing. If you put your heart, your soul, you get it into it. Yeah. As soon as you close your deal, as soon as you have enough in the pipeline, you can pretty much do what you want, if that makes sense. But you don't want to ever do that. Q always ends up saying, always look five houses ahead. Yeah. Every time you do one deal, think five other deals ahead. And well, we're mainly... Back, we're back up, man, so let's, let's get back into it. So. Oh, right on. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, mainly, it's only during lunch. So everybody yeah. takes lunch at the same time. That's okay. cool, man. That's cool. That's, that's real... Uh, hey, it keeps everybody working mm-hmm. on the same hours, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. mostly air fluid, air live. So back to the technical stuff. Well, let's do a yeah. quick recap for now. Now there's new people watching because now uh, it, it posted as a fresh video. For those who are just tuning in, we have Jason with us. Jason's the CFO for Infinite Gauntlet. Uh, Jason has started from Toyota. Uh, we talked about how he started from Toyota, how he's taking the process. If you guys don't know, Toyota's real big on processes, uh, processes and systems that even the U.S. military uses them. Yeah. Uh, uses their uh, their ideas. Uh, I know a big thing called Lean Six Sigma was is really Six Sigma. Yeah, Six yes, Sigma is really implemented. It's really really implemented Toyota, so it's cool that he went from that um, industry to to real estate. We talked about his acquisition deal, how he got his first deal, and now we're talking about systems and tools. And uh, eventually, I start talking about CFO. I think the last one we were live for about a good forty five minutes or so, so it's, it's going good. Uh, what do you want to say, Charles? Man, I just want to go back into the systems. This guy's. Stop <laughs> knowledge. I'm trying to get everything I can out of here, man. <laughs> well, then let's get back into it. Yeah. So, what was the last question we had? Or what question do we have now? Well, I know the Again, last guys, if you guys have questions for this. Did I pull from prop you guys have questions yeah. for this gentleman here, man. Yeah. And, 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 drop it down here. And here's the thing, you know. So, for you guys that are watching out there, whether you're old or young, been in the business a long time or, or short time, I've been in the business a long time. So, I've learned a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know. But here we are, where you've been in the business a year, yeah. and we're talking about the same, same stuff yeah. that that we just learned and we're, we've been implementing over the year. Yeah. See, so it doesn't matter, man, how long you've been in the business. Right. It doesn't matter. It just matters, hey, man, get in there and get it, right? Exactly. You know, yeah, and Baptized that, by fire is what Pablo says. Shout out, Pablo. Pablo, yeah. yeah. Baptized Pablo. by fire, I like yeah, that, man. Yeah, get so. baptized by fire because, I mean, the majority of the time you want to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, I like that. That makes perfect sense. And so we talk about prop stream, we talk about CRMs, we talk about dialers, yeah. uh, we talk about the day of the life of acquisitions and infinity. Mm-hmm. What are the systems that you guys want to provide value to, to everyone who's watching? Uh, What's a good system or tool? That I mean, I really want to make sure that if you guys don't know about this, you should. The EOS. Do you guys know about EOS? EOS. The Entrepreneur uh, Operating System. Give a quick breakdown. So what it is is uh, obviously right. there's six key components that uh, go into any business. And the six ones is there's a vision, there's the process, there's the data, there's the issues. And then um, you want to do the, uh, gosh, what are the other ones? Traction's the last one. And then you want, um, oh, what was that? Gosh, it's always those last ones. It's always the Tell last your ones. So what? It's there. Yeah. Like, or, you, or you want a third, a third broadcast? No, but uh, if you look up EOS, uh, I think it's worldwide. Yeah, um, EOSWorldwide.com. It gives you all the stuff um, that is needed, and it's free. There's, there's some of the tools that are that they use in there. EOS. Is what we use. EOS. Yeah, EOS. Yeah. Well, definitely look it up. And you got that, Frank? Right. It, yeah, it definitely works. And hey, Frank, can you look up that last one I just? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> yeah, because I I do know the vision is always the first one. So what happens is your business is the middle part. Of okay. It. Okay, that's your business, and there's six components around it that is going to run your business. And the, there's a there's an example that they use as as if you golf. You guys ever golf before? Uh, I got golf though, man, but I've never. Golfed, I only right? did that too, Diamond and range. I never played golf How far before, can I but hit? I actually hit that ball pretty good yeah. on my okay. first try. But there is a sweet spot, and the sweet spot is the most smallest spot in the world, and that right there is what's going to end up getting you to go farther than you could ever imagine. And uh, that would be um, it starts off with the vision. So okay. for anybody who's a CEO um, of a company. Always do the vision. I saw you guys' vision up there, the vision statement, yep. the mission statement. Yeah, that right there is the core, uh, the, the, the key element 
to get everybody up on the same. You want to know something, man? When, when we, Mike and I first partnered up, right? We were just cowboys, man, just going at it, right? Yeah, I can imagine. But, <laughs> but as soon as we opened up the office, when the, I came in, and it was right there, man, I was like, yeah, that's when I knew. Yes, you man. guys are on to something. Yeah. yeah, it's it's true. And since it's up there on the board or on the wall, you now everybody who comes in here, they know what you're about. They know what you guys want to accomplish. And that's just the end of it. And if they can match that same, or you guys obviously make a same fit for the new people who come in and they see that, they realize it. Not only that, the customers or the sellers who come in here, if, if they do come, they see that, they know you guys are real, for sure. You have that six one Frank? So it's uh, There's vision, a, data, process, traction, issues, and people. People. That's what see. Oh, my gosh. I know it was a P. It was a P. People, man. But, yeah, and it's always people. Every business, they really, that's the main thing that a lot of, a lot of business owners, a lot of customers, they don't understand people. And we were just talking about, me and Frank, we were just talking about common sense. Um training them you know i mean we went through the same thing and that's where the frustration is is because people don't understand it some businesses don't understand people you know what i'm saying and it's just it goes hand in hand you know that's right, well that's something that's very that's that deserves one of these <laughs> yeah yes. you know and those six uh criteria you're yes. talking about i do have a question that i want to ask what about sms you guys doing sms yes what, yeah. what platform? I, I think it was that text. I think magic. we talked about during uh during our yeah our text magic is what is what we do. We do text text magic. Okay. We use, we so. use uh smart contacts. Smart contacts. Smart contacts, you know. But you know, man, whatever. What I, I man, just what I say to everybody is, if you, even if you're not using what we're using, mm -hmm. do something, man. Something. Use your phone, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, because I like call tools. Whenever they would. They would end up calling back, and we can't get back to them on the phone. We're sending the text through call to us. Yeah, yeah, we're utilizing every inch, every detail that you can out of all of your systems. You guys use call room? Yes. Damn, man. We, all, we have we, that on our bandit side. Damn, dude. We use, we use the same damn yeah. tools, man. Everything's the same, man. Yeah. So... Yeah, well, our guys were out there putting bandit signs the other day, too, man. There it is. I mean, You know what? Let me tell you a story, man. One time, man, this dude... Uh, Mike and I have put banner signs out on the street. I ain't gonna say which one. <laughs> I think you heard the story, right? Uh, not too sure. And the co compliance guy, he called us and he was huffing and puffing. And he was like, I'm gonna get you, man, I'm gonna get you. And he was he was blowing a whistle into the into the phone. What? Yeah, because he was so <laughs> mad, dude. So so we went back out there, we got this pole, and it was like fourteen feet long, you know? Oh my god. An extension, right? Yeah. So we had him like twenty feet up. <laughs> And this dude calls us again. He's like, "I'm gonna get you," and he was blowing the blowing that damn uh, the damn uh, the, whistle. Uh, the whistle into the phone, man. It was it was so funny. But but what was real funny is some cops pulled up next to us. It was like three thirty in the morning. Oh man! And mind you, so it's a twelve foot pole with a three foot extension, and then my height, right? Yeah. So it's up there. Yeah, it's way up there. So this cop pulled up next to us. He looked. He just shook his head, man. He, just, <laughs> he drove off. He said, he must have been thinking like, God damn. Yeah, he's like, that, that paperwork's going to be a bitch. I'm not even going to deal he, with it. He just shook his head and drove off, man. It's wow. Like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah I had one dude um, call me up, and uh, it was through my call rail. This is when I was first throwing out the bad signs. And he was like, yo, you're not supposed to have these out here. And I was just like, well, well I mean, I'm sorry. And he was like, are, are you... Whatever, because he, I let it ring the first time, and then it shows on the, uh, not the, the, on the voicemail, and I end up calling back, and then that's when I was like, yeah, you're looking to sell a house, and I guess like, you're not supposed to leave that stuff out here. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, well, um, yeah, my name's Paul, so I don't know what else to tell you. You want me to take this? Yeah. <laughs> we'll get some more systems. So that's why I put my name on the. <laughs> we had one dude that was just banging our our our, our Google Voice man, he just. I don't know what's wrong with me. He just went crazy, man. You have a lot of time on that. So, so, I got an SMS text blast. Oh, man. <laughs> I sent him, uh, I don't know, like 5,000 blasts, you know, five, every five seconds. Oh, it was, man. He it it said, stop calling my fault. <laughs> <laughs> he never called back, man. Oh, that's some funny stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool what you can do with this stuff. So, what other systems would you... Would you 
Um, ringless voice voicemail. Uh, did you guys do that? Ringless voicemail. You I, know, I think we did it for a little just to kind of try it out, and then we kind of stopped on it. Yeah, yeah stop. So yeah, stop on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just tested it out, yeah. see what we were doing. Same thing with us, you know. We we tested it out, but I just didn't feel it, you know. Yeah, I, the way that I look at it is okay. Well, the voicemail just shows up on there. Yeah. And there's a lot of sellers who obviously are getting the same thing. If they're not getting the same thing, they're just getting people calling and they just don't check their voicemails anymore. Yeah, they, I don't check my voicemail. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, the only voicemails I check is the ones that call on my call right <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so earlier we we're talking about text magic. Uh, Charles mentioned here that we use smarter contacts. Mm -hmm. uh, for guys who are watching, that's the SMS uh, platform where to send out multiple text messages and receive messages. Uh, the new pin comment should be the smartercontact.com forward slash HPHS. You guys want to go on there and kind of see how that works. Um, if you guys want a, a good promo code, that's a good one to use. So you guys can definitely use that. Uh, ring this voicemail. I was like, man, I think we covered quite a, quite a lot, man. Yeah. In the last uh, hour or so. Uh, I guess let's head towards the end. Uh, a CFO, how does, how does that come in? What roles were we looking at when? So as far as the CFO goes, um, I just mainly contact with CEO and it's just to handle what goes in what goes out and um, what Q was talking about that $300,000 so uh, remember I had mentioned the ARV calculator uh, we actually do sell that it's $97 um, but we're revamping it and Q's got this um, he's got the, the um, event happening in February so um, we're actually gonna give that to people who are showing up but it's gonna be a more revamped one now, the amount of time that I have been doing real estate, it wasn't just single family. I've also done um, lots, and I started learning about multifamily. And I noticed that each one of them has its own yeah. entity, so to speak, or its right. own formula to work at. So the way I looked at it was, okay, well, I can do one that's just single family. I can do one that's just lots, and I can do one for multifamily. Or I could put it all into one and then you choose your avenue, however it works. And um, I created this budget, the budget tracker. And I actually had that when I was a supervisor to track my budget so I know exactly what I'm going to make at the end of the year by saving, taking care of It's basically a P&L, so to speak, if you look at it that way. And I brought it up to Q, and Q was just like, yo, this is, this is, this is fire. Like, what is it, you know, what are you doing? It always... There's constants and then there's variables. So anything that's constant, which is basically your rent, mm -hmm. your phone bill, things that don't change, that's your constants. Anything that do changes, like your gas, your um, groceries, food, whatever, um, just implement that with your business. And I told them, I was just like, okay, you've got an office, you know how much the rent is, you know how much electricity, if you pay electricity or internet, that sort of thing, there's your constants. And then you do the same thing for your variables um, as far as like RBMs, um, beast mode, um, all of that stuff, because you can get leads for two hundred dollars today, tomorrow, or next week, next month. You may pay five to eight hundred dollars for the same amount of leads, if not more. That kind of determined how much he was spending that month, and then we would track how much our contracts were coming in. So then, once we did that, um, we took out whatever came out of his expenses with gross amount of uh, the contracts that had closed and we ended up hitting 300,000. 300. The first time was 100,000 in Ju July. It was in July and then in August was the $300,000. That's really awesome, man. I mean, um, yeah, I lis do. listening to you, you know, share, you know, what you guys are going through, what you guys are doing together and building together, you know, it, it uh, it's pretty awesome because here we are ourselves, you know, yeah. and, and we're, we're, you know, we're almost marrying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we didn't, Mike and I were like cowboys, dude. We, we weren't KPIs. We were KPIs. We'll take care of that shit later, yeah. you know. And I knew KPIs from Toyota. Yeah. And we just, we, you know, when we started really implementing tracking our KPIs, you know, we started like, whoa, man, we just, you know, we were... Just spending money left and right. Yeah, man. yeah, and that's funny because Q did the same thing. He yeah. had this crazy eye opener, and I told him, you know, I was like, hey, this is what I have. It's a budget tracker, and then he was just like, well, I give everything to my CPA. I was like, but you're tracking it yearly. Do yeah. it monthly. Do it quarterly. 
find out where you're throwing your money at because if it's not working for you, take that money and throw it somewhere else that is working. And, and, and I won't say what company right now because I know we're talking in private, but that's one of the reasons we we did away with that one, you know, because mm -hmm. we're like, you know, not doing anything for us, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And if it's not doing anything for us, but see, we weren't able to track that until we started really, you know, let's get down to it and start tracking our KPIs, you know, and mm -hmm. we started figuring out where all the funds were going. Yeah. And now we're a lot more mindful of that, you know. Exactly. And that, that's what opened Q's mind up to. And like, like I said, being a CFO, it's just managing the, the, the transactions, what's going in, what's going out, and just having constant communication with Q and saying, yo, this is what we can do. This is what's more, you know, resourceful. Let's take stuff out from here. Let's put it into here and we can go on from it. A lot of it has been trial and error from the start, obviously, but since being into the game and uh, identifying things almost automatically, you would know not, that's not gonna work. Well, you know, the one thing you said right now about trial and error, look, man, nobody really, as far as I know, has ever built companies like this. Yeah. There's companies like ours all around the country now, mm -hmm. you know, but nobody's really built these type of companies. Yeah. You know? They've really only been around for the last, what, four years maybe you know you've had companies that come together yeah i won't say their names but they primarily do this one thing or they're just buying properties or mm -hmm. but like bringing people together to do whole settings sub twos wraps this yeah. that you know I, i've never really seen you know until, until the last four years that, that that's been happening yeah and it's amazing that you say that because uh i had an organizational chart and um that's one of the key things that's going to help your business grow. And um, an organizational chart's going to show each person in that place what their role is and how to be accountable for it. So let's say acquisitions. You know all they're supposed to do is be on the phone and call, 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 call. That's all they do. You know, But you can give them more. You can give them less. It just depends on that type of person. Are they willing to take more and are they going to be successful at it? That um, deserves one of these right here. As far as you know, CEO, you're in the business for building businesses. You know, you don't want to just stick in this business and stay there. You want to grow. You know, and the best way to do that is by hiring other CEOs, training other leaders, because those leaders are going to be your CEOs in other businesses when you start capping farther. And I remember having that talk with Q. I, I told him, I was just like, look, dude, I know Arizona just as well as, you know, San Antonio. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, if you open a business or open a station there, you do one in Houston, you do one in Dallas. Everybody who's working in your companies right now becomes a CEO. You can move them to Dallas. You can move them to Houston and just duplicate what you're doing here to grow. So you guys want to go into the lion's den? We're in it. I mean, no, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about Phoenix. Oh yeah, dude, that one's fire. I, I just, I just love Arizona. You want to go to the Lions Den? Yeah, you're from there, aren't you? Yeah, I'm born and raised Phoenix? in Arizona. Yeah, Phoenix. We were just over there, man. Yeah, I know, man. Every time I see everybody out there, I'm just like, oh, I want to go home so bad. It was pretty cool, man, going up on that mountain. Yeah, know. South Mountain. That's that's the best one. Dude. I was that's getting after Alejandro because he's driving too fast. I was like, man, slow down, dude. Dude, uh, I. It, 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 funny story is when I was in high school I remember a group of my homies and this was way back in the day they had taken this 87 Chevrolet truck it was a crew crew cab you know that's only the three three seats yeah. right uh -huh. and a bunch of dudes in the back and they were coming down the down south oh, mountain I want to hear this uh -huh. yeah and they actually came off yeah and my homie Victor jumped out and he fucked up his, his, his shin dude in the mountain and those uh, you saw how jagged those rocks are yeah. yeah, and they landed inside there. It was really, really insane. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I was telling you, I was telling you, he was going up. I was like, slow down, man. Like, I'm only going five miles an hour. We'll slow down some more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Arizona. I love it so much. It's been about three years since I've been there. So. It's a beautiful city, man. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's, uh, we've been on going over a little hour, 10 minutes. So, let's go ahead and start winding down. Um, I just want to do a quick tip. I know you were talking about earlier about this fire stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's so, do this last quick tip. So you guys pay attention. Yeah. Uh, you guys made it to uh, part two. <clears throat> I know a lot of people thought we ended our first video. Oh, uh, right. Uh, but um, go ahead and share this last tip that you have. So the last tip is fire damage. A lot of people don't understand it. Shout out to Elijah Rubin, which is the lion's den. You know, that dude specializes. Uh, 
in fire damage so you can go to his group uh, page it's fire damage profits it's on Facebook uh, go and check it out they give out so much value um, but the tip on there is you can get paid four times doing fire damage a lot of people don't understand fire damage a lot of investors just look at it turn the other cheek and run away um, most people don't understand that you can still make a fire damage property work if um, you know the right system, so to speak. And the system is insurance companies. You can make money off the insurance company by using a supplemental claim. You know, and the supplemental claim is it's an it's thin air money is what Elijah likes to call it. And that's because the seller or homeowner already got their insurance check. You can go back to it using a public adjuster and the public adjuster will go back and fight the battle with the insurance company telling them you lowballed the homeowner this is how much they're supposed to get and then you just split the difference that makes sense that's one way of making money the other way is wholesaling it you can get it for the lot value you know um, 10 percent 20 percent of the appraised value or however you guys look at it and you wholesale it you just find out how much new builds are give it to another investor who's willing to take on take down the property or they can rebuild it now that the the third one is the restoration so building relationships I was telling Frank about it it's a relationship based niche so you want to go and talk to restoration companies you want to tell them look for anybody that doesn't want to sell their property but that just wants to build rebuild I will refer them to you for 10 or 15 percent of, of the business if not the business but the, the the deal you know and in return all I'm asking is for anybody who don't want to rebuild and they do want to sell them bring them to me and I'll pay you the 10 or 15 percent it just works either way that's your third one right mm -hmm. and then the fourth one is the depreciation one which will also help out with the seller I mean not the seller the um, the buyer um, when you wholesale it so you figure out all the numbers rehabbing the property um, there's a depreciation check and that's what the seller if they're like I'm good with the insurance I, I, you know I'm good I, I just want to walk away I don't want to have the house you want to make sure that you finish off the deal with the insurance company because then they can do um, they can track you down and things won't work out but once that's done and you transfer the deed over to the buyer now the depreciation check gets paid out and then you just ask the buyer for that half because you're making him some money as well it's fire. That's pretty cool, yeah. man. I mean, it's insane, it, and it just tripped me out. I like that, man. Doing some I, really, really cool stuff. That is cool stuff. I like that stuff, man. Uh, we've dealt with some insurance companies ourselves, but not on not on burns, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's it's insane. That's some nuggets right there, it's man. Insane, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Uh, I've never met Elijah, but I followed him. I've listened to some of his podcasts. Yeah, you know? I love him, dude. Like, just he's, he's a good dude, man. I love his energy. His energy is there. It he's always hyped up, hyped. right? Yeah, it gets me hype, and I'm that person that just draws from energy. What's his group yeah. called? The Tribe or something? Uh, which one? Does he have a group called the Warriors or the Tribe? Or? I don't know. I'm not in that one. I'm in the Fire Damage Profits. Well, the Fire one, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Fire Damage Profits. Yeah, and he's actually selling a course on it so if you guys go check it out i'm telling you that course is literally fire because they question. show you everything about it so what if the homeowner got the check and then they didn't do anything to the house in other words they got the check they spent it on buying a car so how do you get the supplemental from the insurance Supp well the, they already got their insurance claim so yeah. they, they got the insurance claim um, it's in the declaration pages. This is the first five pages of, of their, their coverage policy. Yeah. And you want to find out exactly which policy they do have. But if they've already got the insurance claim, nine times out of ten, if not eight times out of ten, sellers or homeowners don't realize that you can you can counter with that supplemental claim, which is why if they have insurance. You there get is. into them and you say, look, I can find you some money. And if I don't find you some money, you don't have to spend me a dime for your time. So I tell you what, I'll find you some money, and when you get the money, send the property over to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's how it works. So when you find a supplemental, you want to tell them, look, um, I can find you some new money. This is where the adjuster comes in. You know, he finds the new money. They split 50-50, all right? And then you have a deal with the adjuster, and you split his 50 with you 
and that's how it works. And you get paid for just referring or just having that knowledge to say, you know what, there is more money in here. There is. Well, there it is, guys, man. So, man. Thank you Jason, so much. that was a good, great podcast, man. Thanks. <laughs> right, Charles? Yeah, yeah. Uh, great podcast. Uh, Mark Boyd's on here. Shout out to Mark Boyd watching uh, the part two because I know yeah. a lot of people kind of fell off after yeah, we had so that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Well, no worries. You got so much value, man. The, something happened to the audio. So, guys, if you guys want to recap, if you guys missed the first part or you guys didn't catch the second part, this video will be on YouTube. Uh, so, we'll go on that real quick. So, you guys, make sure you guys are following Home Bottom Sense Solutions on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. When you guys go on uh, YouTube, Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. If you guys aren't members of the association, make sure you request membership. The podcast is every Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, we are having weekly webinars now, so we'll push that out. Or, I'm sorry, daily webinars. So we'll push that out uh, on our Facebook post. Uh, if you guys are on our email list, you guys definitely want to get on that. Uh, Jason, man, a lot of value, man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> yeah, Thank it's you, man. always a pleasure being with you guys. You guys are amazing. No, we love doing work with uh, with you guys. And everyone in San Antonio, the Hillco team, and yeah. uh, of course you guys in the queue and, and, and the Finney Gotten team. Uh, man, great value, man. So really appreciate having you guys on here, sharing the system and tools that he's using uh, with the Finney Gotten, how they're doing uh, the $300,000 a month, the CFO, yep. the store from Toyota to working in your car to, yeah. to where you're at now, man. Very impressive, man. So, again, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank so, you for having me. It's been a fun One of the things that we always do when we log off here, uh, one of our slogans, I think we have so many of them now, huh? <laughs> uh, but one of our, our main slogans from back in the day was uh, every dollar counts. It's important, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure you can relate to that, yeah. just being yourself or, or being in this wholesale business, that every dollar counts not only for the investor but for the buyer and the seller. Right. So we always log off saying that quote. So with that being said, guys, here at... Home Bottom Sunday Solutions, we always make sure that every, every dollar, dollar counts. Every dollar counts, for sure. I do that one more time. Man. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know it was in the sink. All right. <laughs> every dollar counts. So. All right, one more time. So here at Home Bottom Sunday Solutions, we always make sure that every, every dollar, dollar counts. counts.